Hey, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Today's episode is about the diversity of fungi in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. I just had to do this video because I was just stunned by the variety and the number and the forms and the shapes of all the different fungi that I've seen here in the, in the mountains in essentially my backyard, Virginia's backyard, and where I live is essentially the Southern Appalachian Mountains in Floyd County, Virginia. It's the beginning of August and we've had a lot of rain and warm temperatures and the environment has been absolutely perfect for mushrooms and fungi to grow and reproduce. The Appalachian Mountains are home to over 2,300 different species of fungi and probably maybe that many more yet to be identified. 90% of these fungi have what we call mycorrhizal relationships with the trees and plants that are growing around them. Mycorrhizal relationship is a symbiotic relationship where the fungus and the trees grow together, live together, and each gain something from the other. Many of the fungi help the tree roots gain water and nutrients, and the tree roots in turn will provide some energy resources as in sugar from photosynthesis to the fungi. So these forests are full of all sorts of different fungi, but we don't see them because most of the fungi throughout the year grows as mycelia underneath the soil surface or embedded in wood or embedded in rotting things. So the mushrooms that I'm seeing right now that have revealed themselves to me and revealed the presence of the different species of fungi, remember, are just the fruiting body of the fungus. And the function of the mushroom that we see visible at the surface is to create spores to allow the fungus to reproduce. So let's go take a look at some of the variety of fungi that are here now. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. There's a ton. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So I'm going to take you for a walk down this trail and we'll see what we find. And in just a few steps, I see three different kinds of fungi right here. First is this one that has this very interesting cap very close to the ground that's shaped just like a dome. And then I look over here and here is another fungus that has a completely different form. And then over here is a delicate looking fungus. And, and then over here is a jelly fungus called witch's butter. And I've done an episode on that if you want to see that on my channel. So in just a few steps, we've seen four different kinds of fungi. And looking down the trail, this is incredible. This was not here yesterday. What an amazing looking fungus. Look at the, look how big that is. That is as big around as my hand. And I have to be honest, I don't know what the species is. So there's my big mushroom. And just a few steps away, I look down. And look at this one. This is a coral fungus. And it really looks like coral. It really looks like something out of uh, an undersea uh, scene rather than a terrestrial thing. I'm just so amazed by the variety of fungi that are out. Literally, I take a few more steps and here's another species. Um, this one has almost a shaggy looking, very soft stem, 
and again, an interesting shaped cap. A few more steps down the trail, and I find this structure right here. This is a fruiting body of some kind of mushroom or fungal species. Another step away, and all across this little section are these bright, bright red mushrooms. So here's an interesting little delicate species that I picked up that was growing on the ground. And conditions are just absolutely perfect for the fungi to develop. We've had days of rain, afternoon thunderstorms almost every day for a couple weeks. We've had warm temperatures. So everything has just been perfect to foster the growth and reproduction and production of the mushroom or fruiting bodies of these different fungi. Just brilliantly white and just pushing up from under the leaves. And next to it is another species. Some of the mushroom species to see are very delicate and small and you really have to stop and look to see them. But others are bold and jump out at you. These are jack-o'-lantern fungi. I did an episode on them and it's amazing to see these guys here. So some fungi just come up and there's just like one or two and some are giant and bold. And they have a, this is their own inherent beauty. And here is this species and another one over here. And, but I'm just overwhelmed by the number and variety of species of mushrooms that have revealed themselves to me over the last few days. Walking up to a tree here, and this tree I know has been dead for quite some time, and it's absolutely covered with these shelf fungi. Remember, when we look at this tree, those fruiting bodies we see are merely the parts of the fungus that are for reproduction. And inside that tree would be a web of fungal mycelia that have been releasing enzymes and breaking down the wood and using it for energy. And now they're producing their fruiting bodies, which will release spores and spread to other trees and other rotting species of wood. And it's a light yellow and rather delicate looking. A few more steps down the trail. And here again are those amazing coral fungi. This is, there's one right here. And then a few steps over, there's another nice little grouping of coral fungi right here. And look at these again. <laughs> it just looks like a scene from undersea. So just every few steps is more different species. Here's one with a odd fringe, a un very unique fringe around it with a hole in the center. Beautiful fungi. Amazing. Wanted to stop for a moment and show you this fungi. This is a, a polypore fungus. Some fungi underneath their cap have gills. Other fungi have pores. So the spores come out of either the gills or, in this case, they'll come out of the pores. This one appears to have gills. Before, as an orange uh, around the edges and a red center and a fringe. And this is another identifying characteristic underneath. And here is a stick. Almost looks like an old umbrella hanging upside down. You can see the gills underneath and you can see how it's just growing out of this, this one stick. And so the body of this fungus is growing inside this stick that's the mycelia. And this is merely a fruiting body to produce spores and reproduce of this particular species. Look at that. How cool is this one? 
That's really neat. That is amazing. Check that out. It's unbelievable symmetry. What an amazing structure. Turkey tail fungus. Because they look just like turkey tails. Isn't that amazing? Such variety. Orange fungus. Let's take a look underneath. It doesn't really have gills. So this is a polypore fungus. And this is a chanterelle. These are very, very popular with a lot of people. You can see it doesn't have any real gills. This is a smooth chanterelle. There's a lot of chanterelles on the trail right here popping up. You can see many, many here. All so what was the purpose of my video today? Well, it was certainly not to teach you how to identify 20 or 30 or 40 different species of fungi and name them. It was about appreciating the incredible, incredible diversity of fungi that we have here in our forests. There are so many different kinds and the diversity is absolutely incredible. And of course, my purpose is I want you to go outside and I want you to go see what you can find. But look at, you know, this is a great time to go find mushrooms and see them. The forest floor is covered and underneath the ground with fungal mycelia of so many different species, so many species with a mycorrhizal relationship with a particular tree. In the Appalachian Mountains, we have 110 different species of trees. So that adds to our diversity. It's been an exciting couple days for me walking in the forest and seeing all these different mushrooms popping up one after another. And even coming back today, some of the ones I saw yesterday, I don't see today. A lot of mushrooms are edible and the uh, mushrooms and fungi help convert the decaying matter in our forests into forms that are usable and decompose them and recycle nutrients back into the ground. Many of the fungi are edible, but don't forget, Many of the fungi are also toxic, and some are really toxic. So don't go around eating mushrooms without an expert. Stick with the mushrooms that are on your pizza. I'm gonna finish this video out with some photos that I took over the last couple days. The Appalachian Mountains have this incredible, incredible diversity, not just in fungal species, but in many different species. Uh, diversity of life in Appalachian Mountains can actually treat, be traced back to the ice ages when glaciers pushed northern species far south. And as the glaciers receded, the northern species were able to survive in the cool climates on the tops of mountains that are created by our topography. And with that topography, we have all sorts of little nooks and crannies and climates created by all sorts of different elevations, which has given rise to the huge variety of tree species we have, salamander species and fungal species and species of plants. Tremendous, tremendous diversity here in the Appalachian Mountains.